today I'm going to show you how to make a pocket hug. These are filled with rice and can be popped into the microwave for a minute to warm up. Mine even says hug. The other side, I've popped a heart. You can use a similar method to make an eye mask, but instead of popping it in the microwave, pop it in the freezer so it's nice and cool to soothe headaches and tired eyes. You will need three types of fabric. First is fabric A, the outer fabric. Choose a nice pattern. You can of course use any fabric, but I'd like to encourage you to recycle fabric. Here we have an old shirt or a bit of curtain, old pyjamas, and uh, I think these were also old pyjamas. Uh, today I'm going to use this one as it's a brushed cotton and so is nice and soft. Next you need fabric B which is the fabric for the applique. Um, felt is particularly good because it doesn't fray uh, but you can use any other scraps you have lying around. And finally fabric C, the inner fabric. I tend to use an old sock. I often have them lying around because I seem to go through the heels quite badly. For that I use a section here. Um, the toes are very good for doing eye masks. If you don't have any old socks lying around, maybe a bit of old t-shirt. So first you need fabric A and your hug template. If you don't have one of the templates or don't have a printer to print it out just get a piece of A4, fold it in half and fold it in half again and that gives you A6 which I find is just the right size for in your pocket. I've allowed for seam allowance so just draw around it and cut it out. Next, choose which fabrics you're going to use for your applique. I have chosen some purple felt for my letters, because I think it goes really nicely, and a scrap of similar toned fabrics uh, for my heart. You can, if you've got the template, you can cut out my suggested letters, but if you don't want to use them, or if you want to make your own, get your piece of A6 as before and mark about a centimetre in to make sure you've got plenty of space and then you can do your design and cut it out here. Um, I'm going to do my own initials. which is an N C T They're slightly uneven so I would probably do them again but when you're happy with them that's why I've used a pencil Cut them out and use them as your templates. Once you have cut out your shapes and letters from your chosen fabrics, place them on fabric A and pin them into position. You don't have to centre them, but make sure that you've got at least a centimetre all the way around the edge for the seam. You can, of course, use different fabrics for your front and your back. Next, to stitch them into position. I'm using a whip stitch, which is a simple over the edge stitch, which binds the edge nicely, because if you use a running stitch, you end up with 
flappy edges so are more likely to fray or pull apart. I double over my thread so that when I pull I don't risk losing it off the end and it makes it nice and strong. If you didn't have any pins then um, a little bit of glue will hold it in place as well whilst you do it. So yep just all the way round the edge. So that's my hug sewn on. Next to do the heart. So you can just add your heart with a whip stitch as before but this is a blanket stitch which is a really nice edging stitch. Other stitches you could use are chain stitch. Um, there are plenty of videos on YouTube of how to do different stitches but I'll show you how to do blanket stitch. So you need some embroidery thread uh, and a slightly thicker needle this time. So you start at the edge and in a bit diagonally out to the edge wrap it round so it catches and pull yeah and that's from that so I'll show you another stitch so diagonally across out to the edge wrap that across so you catch it Now that you've got the applique attached to both pieces, you need to sandwich them together, making sure they're both the right way up. And pin the edges. So I've pinned on three sides um, to remind myself when I stitch round not to stitch this side because we need to leave one side open for turning it the right way around. So now to stitch about half a centimetre in on these three sides. You can use a sewing machine if you have one or you can use back stitch. I use a stitch that I call Hobbit stitch because I stitch all the way along with a running stitch in one direction and then I stitch back again filling in the gaps. Once you have stitched on three sides, you need to snip across your corners diagonally. This makes your corners nice and sharp when you turn it the right way out. So now I've already cut them, so when you turn it out, make sure you poke your corners nice and sharply like that. And there we have our outer sleeve. Now put that to one side whilst you knit your rice bag. I like to use an old sock to make my rice bag. So first I cut off the top cuff. Um, I find that makes a good hairband. And then I cut off the bottom bit and that will make nice one to fit just in there. If you don't have any old socks lying around just use any scraps of fabric to make another bag like before but this time stitch about a centimetre in to make sure it's smaller so it will fit inside your outer one. Take your um, sock cuff and stitch with a whip stitch along the bottom edge. Once you've stitched along the bottom, you'll have a nice little bag ready to put your rice in. Here's the rice that I prepared earlier with 10 drops of lavender oil. I gave it a good shake and then I've set it to one side whilst I did all the sewing to let it seep in. It needs at least an hour. I've also made a little cardboard funnel to help get the rice in neatly. So you need to fill it about halfway because socks are stretchy so if we were to fill the sock completely we'd never fit it into our outer one. So let's see. Yep, 
that's about right. Now stitch, whip stitch along the top of there, seal it in and it's ready to go inside your outer bag. So as you can see I have now popped my little rice bag inside my outer bag. Um, I use this method of having two bags uh, because then when you're trying to tuck the ends in of this you're less likely to spill rice everywhere but also you're less likely to lose rice out of a seam or have rice poking through the fabric. Um, so once it's in there you tuck your seams in there and stitch along here. You can just use a basic whip stitch as before but if you want to make it neater uh, use a ladder stitch which I'll show you in a moment. So now that I have pinned that seam allowance in neatly I can show you ladder stitch. So you want to keep the thread in the folds so that we have as little as possible showing. So we go directly across from where your thread's coming out, in and along inside the fabric and back out. And then you come over directly across so you're showing as little thread as possible along the fold and out again. So there is your little pocket hug finished. As I said before you can just pop it in the microwave for a minute and that will heat the rice up um, and if you've used oil in it like I have that will also release the scent as well as popping it in your pocket as a hand warmer. The scented ones are quite nice to pop under your pillow to help you go to sleep. You can of course choose other essential oils, not just lavender. So also on the printout you will find a template for the eye mask version which is made pretty much in the same way with two layers of the outer A fabric. Um, this time I've used embroidery on one side and applique on the other and they're sandwiched together and if you leave one end open as before. Instead of one rice bag I make two rice bags. I find the toes of socks very good if you haven't gone through them. Uh, my kids always go through them hence odd ones and they make lovely rounded sacks to go inside your bag there. Whilst we're on the subject of kids socks if you don't want to do any applique and just want to do a single layer rice bag, you can make little themed ones out of the tops of the socks. So instead of going in the microwave, this should be chilled in the freezer and used to soothe headaches. So one cold, one warm, both great gifts.